The Failed Navy Teleportation Experiment The Philadelphia Experiment One of the most horrifying military urban legends ever is the Philadelphia Experiment, which has persisted as a notorious World War II conspiracy theory. Legend has it that on October 28, 1943, the USS Eldridge, a cannon-class destroyer escort, was engaged. There in the Philadelphia military shipyard, it was time to test out the rumored government technology that would make military ships undetectable to enemy radar. Witnesses indicate that when the Eldridge's generators started spinning up, a strange green-blue glow encircled the ship's hull. All of a sudden, the Eldridge vanished. The ship was later spotted in Virginia's Norfolk Naval Shipyard before vanishing once more and resurfacing in Philadelphia. The people on the ship experienced strange illness. However, it was claimed that some people were still alive but had their limbs fused into the ship. Unified Field Theory, which was proposed in the 1950s but was never validated, sought to combine electromagnetism and Albert Einstein's general theory of relativity. The Navy was compelled to suspend the experiment right away after the catastrophe and made everyone involved swear an oath of secrecy. What actually took place on the USS Eldridge that day, was weren't teleportation devices or invisibility cloaks made by extraterrestrials, instead. They scrambled magnetic signatures of ships using the degaussing method, protecting against magnetic torpedoes fired by U-boats. Eventually, the USS Eldridge was given to Greece in 1951 and scrapped in the 1990s, but Alan Sly would continue to haunt us in all of our nightmares. Rebirth Island Rebirth Island is a mysterious, undiscovered location with incomprehensible events and a government cover-up known as Vos Roshnia. Located between Kazakhstan and Uzbekistan in the Aral Sea, in the 1970s, the small unpretentious island began to attract notice. In 1971, the island's unintentional discharge of variola virus, the causal agent of smallpox, afflicted 10 persons, three of whom passed away. According to documents published, anthrax spores and bubonic plague bacilli were weaponized and housed at the complex. The island where scientists and complex personnel lived, is now in ruins but previously housed roughly 1,500 people. The weather on the island changed frequently, planes landed on one of four runways based on the weather and wind direction at the time. In November 1991, Soviet military officials met at the USSR Ministry of Defense's Virology Center in Zagorsk. The decision was made here to end experimental activity on the island, and by late April 1992, all military units had been evacuated. Within a few weeks, all residents of Vos Roshdania Island were evacuated, civil and military infrastructure were abandoned, and Kantubek became a ghost town. Ten anthrax burial sites were decontaminated in 2002 as part of a program organized and funded by the United States with the aid of Uzbekistan. High Flying Bears Pilots in the United States flew a plane with a bear strapped next to them in the 1950s. A new device known as the B-58 had recently been built, capable of flying at the incredible speed of Mach 2, which is double the speed of sound. The difficulty was that they were so quick that pilots couldn't safely eject. So, rather than having it tested by humans, they decided to put it through its paces with bears. According to legend, black American bears and Himalayan brown bears weighed roughly the same as humans. They began by administering a large anesthetic dose to the bears and securing them to the seat with a belt. Human pilots took off, flying the plane at breakneck speeds before touching eject and sending the bears plummeting into the air. And as their parachutes deployed, the furry payloads were sent floating back down to earth. If any injuries occurred, they were evaluated, and the ejector's design was modified. All of this was immoral and was quickly stopped. Falling tanks in style. During World War II, the Soviet Union attempted to develop flying tanks. 
they pitched the Antonov A-40, a tank designed to glide to the combat. It was intended that the tank would arrive faster and alongside the soldiers, providing them with immediate assistance. They lightened the T-60 tank by taking off the ammunition and interior components before attaching wooden cloth by plain wings and a twin tail to it. The gliding tank was tested in 1942, but despite modifications, its weight made it difficult to purchase. The pilot had to abandon the tank before it crashed. Nevertheless, the project was shelved.